Hey, how's it going? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Uh, this is a guitar channel. We talk all about guitar tech, guitar tone, the particulars of all of that. Do me a favor, subscribe, like, do all the things that you do in 2019 so that uh, people like us can keep doing what we're doing. I really would appreciate it. We've got 450 something videos. I don't know, lots of them. Anyway, I was on vacation, away for a couple weeks, did a couple live videos, hopefully you can check those out. But I promised a video before I left on vacation uh, that is pretty interesting. You probably heard me on this channel before talk about many things in the guitar realm that don't really make a whole lot of difference uh, in the guitar tone. And I think people spend a lot of time arguing about it, uh, about various things, you know, um, capacitor materials, paint finish, so stuff like that. But there are a few things that really, really matter. And I've always said it in many, many videos that anything between the tonal, in the tonal area of the guitar, so between the saddles and the nut, and including the saddles and the nut, uh, anything between there is, is a huge deal. I promised you a video where we would take different saddle materials and compare them back to back to back to back. Sort of like what we did with the short bridge versus the long bridge. I'll link that video up here. Um, but instead of making you wait, basically, because it doesn't really do any good in this particular sense, uh, it makes a big difference. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to play for you the clips of all four saddles, and then we're gonna discuss it uh, at the end. So it's as simple as that. Roll it. So there you go. Uh, we did brass, we did nickel plated steel, uh, we did the Graftech string saver saddles, and we did aluminum. <clears throat> aluminum is actually on the guitar still. A couple of cool things about this. First of all, uh, shout out to Ernie Ball Strings, not sponsored, wish I was sponsored. Uh, I use their strings in the shop. Hit me up someday. Um, the other thing is that uh, just a couple of installation notes. Uh, these Graftech saddles have a different screw size than, you know, any of your normal, just normal brass or aluminum saddles or steel saddles. The thread pitch is different and the, the screw size is different. I actually had to drill the holes out on the bridge. Now, on some bridges that won't matter, but I just have a cheap bridge that I chucked on here for that other experiment. And so probably because it's an import, you'll have to br drill out these holes. These bolts are a little bit bigger, the screws for the intonation. Housework out of the way. What do you think? Put it in the comments below. Let me know what changes to the tone uh, you heard going from brass to nickel plated steel to the string saver graph tech to the aluminum. Sharpest twangiest, I hate that term, everybody wants to tell you twang, uh, <clears throat> stupid term, brass, definitely. Um, it kind of calmed down from there, if that made sense. I did it literally in no particular order. Uh, the brass ones were already on the guitar, so I started with those first. Um, I just literally grabbed out of the pile, the steel ones were next. I got kind of 
worried that I was gonna break a string, so I tried, uh, I figured that these would be easiest on strings, so I wanted to try the string saver uh, graph text and make sure we got them in on the test because I didn't have any spare strings. And so that was third, and then of course, by elimination, aluminum was last. No real reason for that, just this kind of was, it was, is what it is. I know what my favorites were. Uh, let me know in the comments below what the favorites uh, that you had were. Go back and listen to them again a couple of times. I know that everybody's just gonna be like, I like Telly Twang, so the brass is the best. But it's, it's not. It's not. It depends what you're trying to do uh, with the guitar. It should be noted that I used a completely clean profile on the Kemper. Um, just a little bit of room reverb because I can't stand dry signal. It's just boring to me. Um, but it just gives you a basic idea. Uh, obviously this is not scientific. I just said that I wanted to do it and there you go. I tell you what, before I let you go this afternoon, I'm going to go through some comments because it's been a couple of weeks because we've been on vacation. I'm going to go through some comments, uh, give a couple of shout outs to some viewers and maybe answer, answer a couple of FAQs. Uh, let's do that. Make sure that you tune in this Friday for our live show because we're going to be back on schedule for our live shows on Friday also. Uh, so let's get to a couple of questions. Okay, first one. TLW says, when Lover designed the humbucker, it was usual for strings to be pretty heavy, like acoustic guitar strings. The third was G, it was a long post, uh, on a video about adjustable pull pieces on a humbucker. He's basically saying that's the whole reason they were designed, so that you could alleviate that difference in tone from wound strings versus non-wound. It's a cool argument, except that the original Seth Lever design did not have adjustable pull pieces and was only added as a marketing hype thing by Gibson. They were doing that kind of stuff way back then, marketing hype only. Pretty interesting. Wondering whatever happened to the fence post telly. Um, well, it's a fence post, so it's out there in my yard. Uh, there is a pick guard screwed to it still. And we've got some things coming up. It's possible we might actually just give that away kind of as a souvenir. Uh, so that might be coming in some videos very soon. Dave Kirst says, I never liked you in school, so bye. See ya. Uh, I saw this comment a few days ago. I actually went and looked around Facebook, went and looked around. I can't figure out who this guy is. I was actually taught at home, homeschooled, after third grade. So, unless I knew you before third grade, uh, joke's on you, buddy. I don't even know you from school. But if you see this, and you do want to clarify who you are, I don't remember you. So, there you go. Uh, last question, very interesting. I must have mentioned this in a video, I don't remember. Uh, why aren't you selling ice cream now if it was so profitable? I used to have a bicycle-powered ice cream business, and it was profitable. I mean... On good days, we were making three, four hundred dollars an hour. It was really good. Um, why aren't we doing it now? Uh, it was a different stage of life, um, and I went through a period about ten or fifteen years ago where I would build up these small businesses and I would sell them. And I actually sold this to a young kid who had started with a um, lawn mowing business. He mowed lawns in his local neighborhood. He saved up a bunch of money and he literally paid me cash for the whole business. He was about $400 short of what I was asking, but because the story was so cool, he was only like 14 years old. He had like three employees mowing lawns and he said, you know, uh, he asked his uncle, he said, what, what should my next business be? I'm going to be going to college here in a couple of years. And he saw my, my business for sale and he bought it. So that's why I don't sell ice cream anymore. Because uh, I sold it to a 14-year-old kid in Michigan. Super cool story. I hope it worked out for him. And I hope he made a lot of money selling ice cream. Really, really cool. Uh, and the main reason I kind of quit doing it or got away from it is because um, I my body is broken from a motorcycle accident. And so pedaling a bike all the time didn't make sense, number one. And number two, when you're in the food services, many of you who are in the food services industry will realize this too, that you're working when everyone else is having fun and it just didn't make sense to me. So um, there you go. There's the story of the ice cream business. Thanks for hanging out. I know that was a little bit random, uh, but hey, pretty cool. And uh, we will see you in our next video. Make sure you like and subscribe and do all the things.
Thanks for hanging out.